Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, coming today and being with us. Um, I'm a little bit speechless, I have to say, you know, after um, uh, hearing uh, my colleagues, um, uh, Chancellor and, and, and Board of Chair Gooden, so um, let's give him a hand just for a quick second. Thank you very much. So for those of you that I have not had the privilege to meet yet, um, I am from Alameda, Israel. <laughs> And since July 1st of this year, I'm president of the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, the seventh president in its nearly 100 years of existence. Or as my dear colleague, Bill Dennison, likes to call me, lucky number seven. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, Chancellor Perman also indicated, I also serve as vice chancellor for sustainability of the University System of Maryland. Um, representing 12 um, higher education institutions um, and three regional education centers across this great state. Um, you know, 35 years ago, give or take a month, um, I was a nervous young man. Uh, nervous because I was sitting in the living room with my future-to-be in-laws. <laughs> asking for their daughter's hand in marriage. My wife comes from a very traditional Venezuelan family, and this painful ritual um, <laughs> is what it took then uh, uh, to marry this lovely girl. Now my question is for Chancellor and, and, and Board of Chair Gooden, where were you <laughs> when I needed such great pitch <laughs> Um I do want to ask for an extra hand uh, to my dear colleague, friend, and, and boss, Chancellor Jerry Bay Jay Perman, who, who recently got named CEO of the year 2024 by the Baltimore Business Journal. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Towson University President Mark Ginsburg, who's unfortunately not with us today uh, here, uh, his dear good friend, um, he was my provost at my previous job at George Mason University where I was dean. And I used to tell Mark, you're the best boss ever. And I meant it. When I got this job, I told Mark, hey, best boss ever, you're out. <laughs> you got a new best boss ever here. So. <laughs> now, more seriously, you know, when I got this position, the public announcement came out back in late February of this year. I received many messages of congratulations um, from individuals all over the world. Um, you know, more than 30 years of professional life has afforded me the time to meet, work, and collaborate with many people who were kind enough to express their well wishes for me. One of the comments I received, uh, though, stood out. Um, this person said something like, congratulations on getting the best job in the state of Maryland. When I read that, um, I thought, well, what a cute comment. <laughs> but didn't make much more of it then. Now, 85 days into that job, right? <laughs> I am realizing that this person was right indeed. And that I am indeed lucky to have landed this great role with UMSIS and with the University System of Maryland. You know, I'm lucky because I get to work with a group of talented, world-class, scientific teams, faculty, staff, students, who are going after better and better ways of improving our natural environment, addre addressing challenges in our state, our country, and our world that are getting tougher and tougher, requiring the best minds money can't buy. We've got them. Some of them are here with us today. If you're a faculty on UMSIS, please raise your hand. Thank you. You know, at OMSIS, we cover from the mountain to the ocean and from genes to ecosystems. Our labs are located from the Appalachian Mountains in Western Maryland to our multiple locations across our beloved Chesapeake Bay. Our research teams have pioneered many of the scientific breakthroughs that are used in other parts of the world to find better ways to protect our environment while finding better ways to sustain a better quality of life for all. 
I am lucky because I get to be part of a state that is committed to higher education as a proven vehicle for social mobility and improving our overall quality of life and the fairness of our societies. I get to work with a fantastic group of colleagues, with my fellow university system presidents, some of whom are here today, and also with the university system staff also that are here today. I have felt so welcome, and it's almost like I have been working with this dream team for a long time. It is a rare privilege to feel this way, I'll tell you that. I am lucky, and I think we are all lucky on this one, to live in a state that has placed, placed such a priority on the environment, not only through OMSIs and other system universities, but also at the highest level of policy and decision-making and investments through its partner state and federal agencies many non-governmental institutions and an engaged group of citizens. Many of the state agencies, federal agencies, our partners are here today. We're saluted by Chancellor Perman earlier. I thank you for being here. And looking back, I have been very lucky to work with outstanding students, fellow researchers, and collaborators from all over a lesson to me from all these interactions is that being a scientist has been my true life privilege. I say this because I have been able to work with individuals of all cultures, of all colors, of all backgrounds. You know, in science, we can put all these apparent differences aside, like they really don't exist. And then you realize they actually don't exist. I think scientists have a thing or two to teach to other parts of society in addition to the science itself. And I can be here with you tonight because I have had the support of a myriad of individuals throughout my life. Like the saying goes, I stand on the shoulders of giants. I am lucky to have, to have, had, a, have had a mother who would argue with my great school teachers <laughs> that I was not an unruly child, <laughs> but rather that I was too smart for that class. <laughs> Her words, not mine. <laughs> Lucky to have had a father for whom a straight A report card was barely acceptable. <laughs> I am lucky for my family. Uh, my brother and his family are here today. They became those unconditional partners that everyone needs to make it through the years. My friends also, um, many of them are here today. I thank you for coming. Are an extended family away from home. Uh, that support network that's key for us that came to the US from other countries. Um, I am lucky to be a parent of two beautiful human beings who are both actually Maryland graduates. <laughs> and now young women, yes. yes. And now, and now they're young women making their way in this world and from whom I have learned so much over the years. My only hope is to continue to make you proud and I can't wait to see what I'm sure will be great things coming from you. And you know, all of this rolls up again to that lovely girl. <laughs> and this is where I'm the luckiest. My wife, Monica, is my best friend, my life partner, and without whom I would probably not be here today. Nearly 35 years, two countries, four states, six universities. <laughs> <laughs> More moving trucks than I can care to count. <laughs> She has hard ends for <laughs> She has been my anchor through all the joy and anguish that has come our way. Well, listen, I don't intend for my good fortune and my luck to end anytime soon. I am as pumped and as hungry as I have ever been. And I'm thrilled that we will be celebrating our centennial, our 100th anniversary of Elmsies, next year. So stay tuned for exciting developments on that front. With your support, 
I am confident we can do great things together. Finally, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage, Heritage Month Ooh. as we speak. Woo! Bravo! And I think I'm also lucky for that heritage. In 1966, the year I was born, a Chilean composer named Violeta Parra released a folk song that I find myself humming all the time, particularly when I'm happy, which happens to be a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the song's lyrics say, gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto. Something that translates roughly into, thanks to life, which has given me so much. Thank you, and I appreciate you. <laughs>